Right, well, folks, I haven't made a video for a while, so I um, thought I'd better make one. I've got a new toy arriving today. Pretty big box. Anyway, I sort of needed something to power projects and stuff while I'm, you know, mucking around with electronics. And I also have a problem with my big radio. It blew up. It needs a surface mount chip removed. So I bought myself one of these little, these fancy pants hot air rework stations from eBay. So, that said, let's take this thing out of the box and see what we get. I mean, this one has a hot air rework station or a hot air gun, a soldering gun, a soldering iron, and a um, built in 5 amp 30 volt power supply as well. So, I'll just leave this guy back. You are recording, aren't you? <laughs> Sorry, folks, just double checking the camera it is recording. It is. Um, yeah, it'll replace three pieces of equipment on my workbench with one piece. I and mean, it's double box. So, flip it over. So here it is now. This model is the uh, WEP. And I'll just grab my glasses over here. It's 853D. I figured I'd do this unboxing while I'm waiting for my um, ZFS server to resilver itself because one of the discs died on it so it's going to take several hours before I can access my data. Move you out of the way. Over there. Thank you. Alright. So obviously on the top we've got the instruction manual. This will be a laugh, but it's only genius. Not knocking the Chinese but mm, Replacement parts instruction, terms of use. Oh, what? What? Do I have to sign something to use this thing? Display notes, yada yada. Actually, the English, English is quite good in this, so I'm not looking this. Yeah, so, alright, so that's the instruction manual. I'll read that in a minute. I'll pull this guy out. Put the phone. Put it down there. By the way, if you hear trains in the background, I have a game running on my computer at the moment, uh, which I play on Facebook which is um, a stupid train game that I've heard things. So, we've got a um, soldering on a stand here, obviously. I'll plastic on that one. There we go. And there's the soldering on stand. And I'm just going to have a look over here by the camera to make sure I'm holding everything so you can see it. Yep, excellent, good. Okay, so there's the soldering on stand. So we're going here and go. Oh, I've got a box. I wonder what's in here. This will probably be the um, hot air gun tips. Ah, good guess. Yep, that's the hot air gun tips. So we've got some, um, we've got four of those. A fairly big one, a reasonably big one, a not so big one, and a fairly small one. So well, that's fair enough. Okay, I'll just put those back in there for now. What else have we got in the box here? Um, oh. oh, that's nice. They give you some um, banana plugs with crop clips for uh, testing purposes. That's pretty handy. What's this? That's a. Mm, I think I know what that is. Everybody should recognise that computer cord, power cable. Okay, there's the soldering pencil. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It looked a bit bent there for a minute, but it's just the way the... Shut up, phone. Let's get this plastic 
cover off. Actually, what I'll do is I'll take the careful with this because it's got a very delicate ceramic heater element inside. And then just, there we go, more cover. Remove that, put that back onto the iron. Oh, that's got a nice, nice, very fine tip on it too. Excellent. Perfect for working on SMD stuff, which is what I plan to do with this because I have nothing here that will do SMD without ruining it. Okay, so I'm going to put the iron over here beside my current iron. Uh, is there anything else I can pull out of here? There's the uh, bracket that holds the hot air re rework station. Pop that on there. What's this? Ah, this is the hot air, this is the hot air gun itself. I made sure I've got one of the ones that got the fan built into the actual hot air gun rather than the um, pump built into the uh, main unit because apparently the pump in the main unit versions tends to fail. That's what I've been reading on the double EV blog forums. And I'll get this out. Oh my god, that weighs a ton. Another train arriving. There we go. Oh, and an IC popper. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's get the box out of the way. There we go. And here's the main unit. And the uh, hot air station back up, a uh, hot air gun back up here. And we will open this up. Hold it, slide the uh, hot air gun through. So, in here, and this has been a pain in the butt, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just make that. Now, I'm not going to plug this straight in right away because, as Dave Jones on the WEB blog says, now plug it in, take it apart. So, well, don't turn it on, take it apart because I would like to check the uh, QC on this before I turn it on. The last thing I want to do is plug this thing in and have it go bang in my face. Now, uh, be remember that it's. What's this? It's got a little sign here, which is, oh, okay, yep, uh, it's in a foreign language, but what I can, what I can read, ah, must to keep the handle on the holder before turn on the machine, aha, uh -huh. right, so what that really means is this is, a, this is a, one of, like one of the many others, when that's sitting in the handle like that, there's a read switch in here, which the instructions is to say, yes, it's safe for me to start the hot air, so if you don't want it sitting there, you know, you might have it sitting there and you turn it on and it starts burning stuff on the table. Okay, so let's get this bit of foam off the bottom. There we go. And we'll start pulling out screws and just check the internals and make sure it's um, up to snuff. We don't want to, like I said, plug it in and have it go bang. Use the, uh, I'll use its own um, solder iron tray as the receptacle for the screws here. Number two. Number three. Now, because this one doesn't have a pump inside, you don't have to pull a screw out of the bottom like uh, some of the other models that are out there. Because some of the other models, well, obviously, they're the the reason they have a screw in the bottom, or a set of screws sometimes, using maybe one, it may be six, or uh, three, is because um, there's an anti-vibration mount inside them, but in, it allows the uh, pump to um, wobble around in transit and it may damage the pump. So what they do is they put screws into the bottom of it to lock the pump down in position so that the um, pump doesn't get damaged in transit 
and that's why those of you with the ones that have the um, pump internal to the unit, internal to this part, we will have instructions to remove those screws. And simply to stop the pump from being damaged in transit. So I'll just get these last few screws out. We'll have a look in here. See um, how well she's built. Right, so they're removed. Now I should be able to, yes, I can remove the top. Let's get rid of that bit of rubbish. There we go. Assume nothing. Yep, yeah, I think it's that. Alright, I'll put that over here. I'll just grab an inspection light. Have a look in here, make sure there's nothing that looks glaringly obvious. So this is Okay, so this section here is obviously your power supply, your 5 amp power supply, 30 volt. It's got a cooling fan in the back. Oh, look at the size of that big transformer. We know what that, we know what that one's for. That one's for the power supply. This one here would be for the, um, um, the rework station itself. Um, it doesn't appear to be anything really glaringly wrong inside. I'm just going to turn it around so you guys can have a look. Apologise for that. Sit that box in the wire, however. Pick it up. There we go. Sharp phone. It does not appear to be anything glaringly obvious. Obvious, it's miswired, although this is obviously a um, slightly lower spec model than their flagship model because there are a few pins here that aren't connected to. I don't see a uh, connector in there that's floating around, so obviously something hasn't been left disconnected from the factory. Um, yeah, okay. Just checking to see if it's switched on the main, on the hot side and not the, um, uh, what do you call it? The neutral side. So, uh, let's see. I've got the way an ISC is wired. Oh, well, I'll just have to remind myself. Where's my multimeter? Okay. Put on the range on the beeper test. Alright, so when you plug it in, lift is new, lift is new, is uh, hot. Okay, now we just find out which one's hot. Now I'll give you guys a proper look in here, so obviously, okay, so now this one's got two transformers in it. This one here would be for the 5 amp power supply, this one here would be for driving the um, hot air station and the um, soldering iron. Uh, it's 40 volts, 20, uh, sorry, 28 volts, 32 volts and 11 volts. Um, oh look, they've got a little bodge, couple of bodge wires here. Going across the here, I don't know what they've done that for, maybe it's for extra current carrying capacity, maybe it was a 1 amp design and they added extra current carrying capacity with these bigger wires we've got three power devices at the back here i'll just swing it around kind of difficult to show you guys but we've got one two three power devices um without taking this large heat sink area part off i cannot tell you what they are but i probably assume they are common npn pass transistors similar to an ion laser power supply pass bank um, yeah, there's plenty of little adjustment, uh, trimmers in here. Uh, everything appears to be, uh, insulated. So, or anything that could be live or a slash at a high voltage potential is all insulated, even over here we've got more of it. Everything, everything's socketed. Uh, yep, that one's socketed. What chip is that? What I see is that. That looks 